Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabor here. As you can see, I'm invisible. Why? Because I'm preparing to do my movie review on the latest adaptation of an H.D. Wells novel called The Invisible Man. Now if you don't mind, I'm going to make a snap so I can reappear. Like this. There, that's better. <laughs> Yeah, this is another Blumhouse production under the direction of Universal Pictures with writer and director Lee Whannell, who just gave us Upgrade a year and a half ago with Logan Marshall Green playing a qualigeptic man ready to get revenge on these guys who killed his wife by having an AI built into him so that way this AI would actually teach him how to fight against him. Which, I actually didn't mind the concept that they really went for. I mean, it was well done. Um, I, I didn't think it was basically a body horror film of sorts. It, it's basically just a sci-fi action thriller. But that led to that letdown ending. So that that's probably the explanation of them all. Um, but if that was certainly the case here, I mean... It still was a good movie. I mean, it could have been worse. Um, now, there's been several adaptations of this H.G. Wells novel. You know, The Invisible Man. There was a 1933 film. That was a classic. Um, there have been many others that followed. I know there was Memoirs of the Invisible Man with Chevy Chase, Daryl Hannah, and Sam Neill. That was a John Carpenter film has a mixture of comedy but it was also a sci-fi um, thriller which is amazing to see Chevy Chase play a whole different role compared to his usual comedies but I mean he really did pull it off even though it was a bit of an odd choice and of course we even have Hollow Man with uh, Kevin Bacon you know playing a a precocious psychopath as a scient who plays a scientist who's a complete psychopath which he wants up in that experiment that just gone completely wrong so that's where you get to see his insides and then next thing you know he'll become invisible and that's why he's going around you know killing people slashing them and all but there was only one person to stop him well, that was certainly the case with this version because there's some similarities to Hollow Man. But it just seems like a rather uh, derisive um, sci fi horror film that gets so intense, but it just seems rather dreary. Yeah. Now, originally they were going to have an Invisible Man remake which was going to star uh, Johnny Depp that was going to be under the Universal's uh, cinematic universe called Dark Universe for all of the Universal Monsters team put together so if superheroes can do the same for Marvel and DC then they would do the same for Universal but that failed with but unfortunately after the failure of The Mummy with Tom Cruise they just canceled it completely. I mean, they were going to start having the entire team joining in, or it'll set it off for it, but that's not going to happen. And that's sad. So now, they put it on hold and decided to do a different version for Blumhouse. And this time we get Elizabeth Moss, who was in the movie Us last year. And I know she just did The Kitchen with Marissa McCarthy and Timothy Haddish. You two comedians. Which, unfortunately, the film was pretty boring considering the fact that she's the best thing about the movie. <laughs> yeah, sadly. Um, so, for an actress like her, I mean, maybe she could definitely pull this off. I mean, right way or the other. But then I saw the trailer and it looked so generic as hell that I, I felt like you know this is going to be one of those movies 
where she's going to be going around being attacked by her ex-boyfriend, who's a complete, utterly asshole. Just going around smacking her, being the shit out of her, you know, just get away with murder, just tricks her, thinking that she's crazy, nuts, paranoid. And what do I see? Well, that's basically what I expected. And, well, here goes nothing. Because I had to check this movie out online since theaters are already closed due to this, again, coronavirus pandemic. Which I hope this will be over pretty soon because I sure as hell isn't having any fun, you know, having to stay home. But at least it's enough to be safe. Well, it's not easy, man. Stars Elizabeth Moss, Oliver Jackson Cohen, Alice Hodge, Storm Reed, Harriet Dreyer, Michael Dorman, Bernadette Carty, Molly Golden, Nash Egerton, and Anthony Brandon Wrong. It's written and directed by Lee Renell. The movie begins when we meet a young woman named Cecilia Cass, who is played by Elizabeth Moss, who is trapped in a violent, controlling relationship with a wealthy optics engineer and a successful businessman, Adrian Griffin, who is played by Oliver Jackson Cohen. Who one night, she drugs him with a sleeping pill called Dizepam, so he'll be able to be knocked out through the rest of the night in the bedroom and she escapes their home into a nearby woods to wait for her sister Emily who's played by Harriet Dyer. Her entire home along with his is actually very secure there's a lot of surveillance cameras around and that's where she went inside her room to actually shut it off only leaving just one active um, in the bedroom to see if this will be able to capture the footage but also was ready to um, take off the collar of their dog yeah which yeah she wears yeah this dog wears a surveillance collar to so in case if there's some burglars coming around and and the alarm sets off and that's where the dog would be ready to attack and then he'll be the one to go after so Apparently that actually did happen as he, she tries so hard to, to escape into a nearby woods to wait for her sister. But then after she arrives, Adrian just nearly catches Cecilia, just punching straight into the car window. And the pair just left as soon as possible, leaving Adrian behind. She accidentally dropped a medicine capsule on the road and now Cecilia had hide out with her childhood friend and Emily's ex-husband James Lanier who's a San Francisco police detective uh, played by Aldous Hodge along with his uh, teenage daughter Sydney who's played by Storm Reed. Um, two weeks later we learned that Adrian so, Adrian's home, of course, um, he's actually creating some sequent experiment that he has somewhere in his home. And so that's where he basically does. But I think we're going to leave that out so, once we get to. But two weeks later, Adrian has seemingly committed suicide by leaving Cecilia $5 million in his will that's being organized by his lawyer brother Tom Griffin who's played by Michael Dorman. As she tries to move forward with her life, I mean she's already being plagued with several unexplained experiences that she had, getting particularly paranoid thinking that Adrian might come back and attack her. I mean everywhere she tries, I mean she's she's definitely afraid. If that wasn't bad enough, during the job interview, um, she actually fainted uh, 
while her portfolio was missing from her briefcase and was taken directly to the hospital. They, they later found out that um, that dye's pan that was actually uh, put into her system, so that means that she was been drugged. I mean, how on earth did that happen? Well, we never know until she begins to find out that somewhere, somehow, there might be a ghost that's appearing in her room, uh, which apparently did happen one night. So it's this ghost, you know, trying to attack her completely. But in reality, it looks to me like Adrian might be alive the whole time. So, shortly after returning home, Cecilia did find the same bottle that she drugged him with, and that's where he came by to explain what just happened. Um, it was filled with blood, and it was in her bathroom, just when she just took a shower, and she had to arrange her meeting with Tom and James about what just happened. So. It, she insisted that Adrian might as well be faking his death and uses his um, optic espadise to become invisible because that's his experiment, you know, wearing this particular suit that has all these uh, balls of secure cams around. So everywhere he goes, he's going to go around attacking her, you know, just dragging her around, you know, appearing just when she goes around dropping several uh, paints and other material that's where well, you'll be able to see the invisible man already and sometimes the suit actually flickers everywhere it goes so of course that's what led to um, a lot of um, tricks and turns here and there where Adrian was basically, you know, tormenting her, torturing her, and even, the, you know, getting her into bigger danger. You know, getting attacked, being thrown around, everything. Plus, um, the fact that she's being accused of murder. Uh, especially when um, she found a knife that's being held by Adrian and actually slit... Um, Emily's throat at a local restaurant and just gave the knife to her pretending that she was the one who, who slashes her. She was being taken away to a mental ward and already trapped, had an er interrogation, had an interrogation explaining about what just happened. Um, we also learned that of course she gets all the blame such as having Sydney um, being slapped or hit, even though she didn't do it at all, or the fact that you know she actually came, or the fact that Adrian came, you know, pulling out the the bedroom sheets and just walk around barefoot with footprints around that sort of thing, only to have her finding out for herself. But it led on to when. When Cecilia find a way to stop him, hoping that if he appears, he'll be able to go after him, you know, attack him, just before all the guards started to, uh, you know, put, just capture her and take her directly back to the room. But they're all getting shot at, you know, beaten up, and then she escapes from the mental ward and was ready to you know, chase um, Adrian around, already taken the car and, and was ready to attack Sydney and James. So hoping that um, if, um, if Cecilia comes, she'll be able to stop him. Um, and I know that's going to lead to a lot of twists and turns that that actually said things straight. Um, I don't want to give it away, and I'm not going to, but I'm just going to leave it at that, short and simple. Um, 
I wasn't really looking forward to seeing this um, from the beginning. I mean, it's too bad though because I think this could have been excellent. But to me, it was just dreary. Uh, the frills were lacking in particular. Um, you just felt totally bad for Elizabeth Moss's character, Cecilia. I mean, the way she's being treated. I mean, th this guy is just a complete psychopath. No matter what he does, I mean, he's just going to go around beating the shit out of her, even when he's invisible. You know, just faking his death, you know, doing all, all these crazy sadistic things to her getting her into bigger trouble, thinking that she's completely insane, nuts, but you know that all this time it's really him that's doing all that. The dialogue was pretty soft too. I mean, yes, there's tremendously uh, jump scares filled with it. The score done by Benjamin Wallfish, you know, it was trying to bring in some deeper notes, chills, and a lot of those machine welding noises that just goes around and around and around, especially in the end credits, which went on way too long. Not very impressive, even for an Invisible Man film. I mean, sure, the movie does have some blood in it, of course. It's an R-rated film. There's going to be a lot of language here and there. The special effects at least were impressive, though. I mean, the way they created the Invisible Man, done in CGI, where he can do all the any kinds of movements such as taking out every object like the guns and the knives you know going around slashing or or going around shooting and knocking the guards up you know using all these physical stunts you know like throwing all the bodies you know breaking their bones you know shattering them from wall to wall you know throwing them around i mean Especially when he did it to um, Cecilia, and then also did it to Stephen, with blood splurting out, you know, smacking them, beating the shit out of them, that sort of thing, or you know, even getting shot at when once he finally appears as the suit actually flickers. Um, he doesn't speak at times until we finally get the reveal. I mean, yes, he can breathe, because we know he's going to appear it anyway. I mean, it's, yes, it had the potential for the Invisible Man film to be made. And I admit it. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. And recently, it's very shallow, especially these characters alone. I mean, they're incredibly shallow. Couldn't even trust any of them at all, even if I care. I just, I pretty much just see Elizabeth Moss in danger. That's all I see in this film. I just didn't care for it at all. I thought the whole film was totally vague. Just so many cliches of all these uh, kills here and there. Um, I pretty much guessed what was going to happen at the end of the movie. And I just feel like it was just a waste waste of two hours. I mean, Moss was, at least, was uh, prevalent in her role, but that's pretty much it. I didn't care for the rest of the cast that much. I mean, they seem rather forgettable. But I, but I know it's all just a setup for it. I mean, you basically just see, you know, scenes of Moss already being tormented. You know, you have Adrian just going around, you know, writing some nasty things to her sister, thinking that she did all that, but she, she knows she didn't. She's trying to tell the truth, but no one would believe her situation. I mean, come on. And it's not really scary either. Not thrilling at all. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I expected more from Lee Winnell, but this is just pretty forgotten. And I think it's going to stay that way, but I certainly doubt that because it's already getting a praise. And and they're actually planning on doing a franchise for this movie, which eventually they're going to do The Invisible Woman with Elizabeth Banks. 
which I know that's always certainly the case because of course Elizabeth Banks is already in, into trouble with her uh, Char Charlie's Angels reboot and we already didn't know how that turned out <laughs> Um, I don't know, it's just, I just didn't really care for it, it's totally unnerving, just didn't work at all. If you want to see something better, just check out Hollow Man, essentially has that particular similar story here, but much thrilling, a lot of kills, even better, I really bought the whole thing. I mean, and yeah, if I want to see some other Invisible Man uh, adaptations, I'll just check out the classics instead. And even the underrated uh, Memoirs of the Invisible Man. I, I'll i just consider this a miss. So anyway, that's the Invisible Man, and I give the movie two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. Get ready for me to disappear.